Hello guys and welcome to Lesson on Coding. My name is Ryan Lesson. Alright, today, you know, I've been trying to do this video for a while, trying to get some more open source out there, trying to help really have other developers find things and be able to implement some cool stuff. So let's get started. Um, we're doing something pretty cool today. Um, but actually, you know what, a quick background on me. Um, I've been actually doing uh, full stack development for about um, four and a half to five years now. Um, work primarily with, you know, Angular 4, React.js, but do a lot of other cool stuff on the front end as well. With back end, you know, I've been working with Ruby, uh, .NET, uh, Node, MeanStack developer. So doing a lot of stuff kind of spread out everywhere. Love what I do. And yeah, so without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so as you can see right here, I basically have a list of all 50 states and I guess um, territories as well. Okay, so we have all 50 states and territories. So what we wanna do is do something that you've probably seen a lot on Google, on YouTube, is when we type in here, we're gonna have an autocomplete for us. Okay, so what we're gonna do, so like when we type in, for example, Colorado, we want Colorado to show up right there, only be here, and we want search results to populate in a drop down while we're doing it. All right, so to make this as quick and fast as possible, um, and show you guys and try to teach as much as I can. I, um, in the app component, let me show you which I did. I have basically a states array right here. I've been using reactive forms. I basically hooked up this input right here with form control name search. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I think I need to do, well, the first thing we should do, I don't think, the first thing we should do is create a dropdown. You know, we want to see a dropdown. We want to know what, what our dropdown is going to look like. So let's come here, let's come into our HTML and let's add another div for our dropdown. We'll call it, uh, we'll call it search, we'll call it state container. That's what it is, the container states. Uh, drop down. Okay, got it, perfect. So let's do that. And now let's go into here, select it. Okay, got it. So let's think about what we need to do. We need to make it an absolute position element because we don't want it relative to anything else. We don't want relative position or like a black position. Uh, we don't want it to be behind anything. We want it to be on top of everything. So let's make the Z index a uh, higher priority than everything else. Um, let's give it a width of 100%. Let's give it a height of 200 pixels. Let's give it a max height of 300 pixels and let's give it a background of f6 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 which is just a light gray okay click there we go and boom there's our drop down all right and if you want to see i basically have it um wrapped in a div i have the input wrapped in a div which is positioned relatively so it's very easy to just use an absolute position element in there to do to accomplish this feat. Okay, so come back over here. Um, we have that there, looks good. Um, what we need to do now is let's put all 50 states in that drop down container, let's do it. So to do that, back to our app component, you saw earlier that I had this array of states, I contain all the states. So let's just iterate over the states. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use an ng4, And we're gonna do that. Oh man, who is people on Slack, man? If you ever use Slack, people message on me that all the time. Okay, so have this right here. So now we have all 50 states populated right there. Um, doesn't look good though. Goes outside the container. We need to set an overflow to make that uh, overflow to make that scrollable. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna set overflow of y equals auto. Awesome. So now we have an overflow of y that equals auto. So now you see it's scrollable. And now since we have content in that container, we don't need a height on it because the height will just be the same size of how much content's in the container. There we go, and boom, there we go. Now we have a scrollable dropdown. So I'm not really liking the style of that. You know, it's kind of bland, doesn't look good. It's not the same font. Let's style it real quick to make it look nice. So we're gonna come here. We're going to actually go in the right here in the app component.html, give it a class of states. Okay, come here, 
type of state right here. So this state, what it's gonna do is we're gonna give it a padding of 10 pixels all the way around. We're gonna set the font family to sans serif because that's what I believe I set the container to. The other, this container right here. And we're going to also give it a color of, hmm. No, oh, I like this one. Okay, we're gonna use this purple color. Give it a light purple color. I think purple goes really good on this uh, gray I'm using. Okay, and there we go. So we have this drop down that looks good, looks styled, and we could go through it. Um, one more thing we probably want to add is a hover, so we know which one we're hovering over. Um, we'll just give a hover, and we'll give it a color of, what's another light gray? C2, C2, C2. Okay, another light gray we're gonna use right there. And now as you can see, oh, you see they're turning gray, but we don't want them to turn gray, we want actually the background. Sorry about that, folks. There we go. Oh, and if I don't know if I touched on this earlier, the, I'm using hot module reload right here, basically just injecting um, the styles in so I don't need to refresh the page or anything. Very good for rapid, super rapid development. So there we go. Got it going, scrollable, all the states. Perfect. So next step is right when the page loads, this shows. We don't want that. We only want this drop down container to show if we click on the input and we want it to close when we click outside of the input. Let's do it. So first thing I'm gonna do is come here to our, basically back to our app.com.html. And I'm going to wrap this whole thing in a div. Okay, do that. And then we're going to give this, we're gonna set up a click handler or on our input. So whenever we click on our input, we're gonna run this function. We'll call it toggle. Uh, we'll call it toggle dropdown. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. I even set up a state here to have state of our dropdown. So we're gonna set our dropdown state. We'll call it show dropdown. Then we're gonna set equal to false because we don't want it to show when the page first loads. And we'll set this whole dropdown with an ng if. If you guys don't know what ngif does, it basically removes that element from the DOM um, if that expression evaluates to false and if true, it inserts it back in the DOM. Very cool, very powerful. So we do that and we'll do show drop down right there. Okay, so it's only gonna show if drop down's false. So if I click away, it's gonna probably give me an error because this toggle drop down's not there, but it'll be fine. So you see it's not there, perfect. Let's add the toggle drop down function. Okay, so in this drop toggle drop down function, what we need to do is we need to set this dot, uh, what was it? Show drop down equals bang. So it's the opposite of what this dot show drop down already is. Okay. So when we click in it, it shows. When we click out of it, it goes away. Click, it shows. Click out of it, it goes away. Okay, awesome. So got that in there. Looks good. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we need to have it close when we click outside anywhere. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this, um, but basically what you're gonna need to do is make a directive. I'll show you guys what the directive looks like real quickly. And also this will be on GitHub in case you wanna look in further. What it's doing is basically saying, if you're clicking outside of the directive, which we're gonna attach to our dropdown container, send an event up and we'll close it. Okay, so click outside is the name of our directive. And we're gonna set the Okay, and we'll call it. I'm gonna run toggle drop down again. Okay, awesome. So we click it, it shows, click out of it, it goes away. Click it, it shows, scroll it, click out of it, it goes away. Perfect, got it. All right, last but not least is that filter. So in Angular 1, there was a pipe for filtering. In Angular 2, they took it out. Um, yeah, I know it sucks, but you know what? They're super easy to build. All right, so I actually already built it again. I wanted to save some time. I didn't want to take up all the time in the world live coding this. So I set up a pipe um, right here. It's called the search filter pipe. And not going to end up, but basically what it's doing is it's just taking the search value and the array value, iterating over the array and seeing if that search is in the array. That's going to return the array of just the values that match the search. Okay, awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to go to our... 
we're gonna go to our where our ng if is right here. So state, we're gonna pipe state into our search into our search filter. And we're gonna set get search value, which is just a getter I set up just to get the search value. You can see it right here. It's just a getter I set up. Just try to save some time on this. All right, so we're gonna do that there on the drop down, and we're also you know what reusability. We're gonna use it again for our container right here. Awesome. So we do that, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Would you see the holding? The holding auto completes for us. Perfect. Looks good. Looks good. Okay. Click away. We see what we got there. It looks awesome. Perfect. Okay. So last but not least, um, when I click on let's say Delaware, I want Delaware to basically go in our input, and I want the thing to close. So do that. Again, very simple. What we're going to do is just set up another click event handler right on that div. That is all these divs right here, just to let you guys know. And we're going to set it equal to, I think I already defined this just to set save time again. Select value. And we're going to set the same the like value as S. So S, remember, is every state. So every state is S. So whatever we click on, we're going to select the value as S and we're just going to patch it in there for us. So now that we come in here, oh no, what happened? Maybe I messed up something on that little click. What's going on there? Hmm. One second guys, I probably have a syntax error or something. Ah, huh, no syntax error. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so it looks like I just got rid of the class card. Yeah, I did. Sorry about that, little mistake. All right, so click on it. Live coding is always fun, but click on it. As you can see, we have all these, and we click on, let's say, Florida. Boom, Florida is only there, and Florida only shows up. So there we go. There is the simplest auto component complete. Um, hope you guys learned a little something today. Again, this thing will be posted on GitHub under my username, BigLess27. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, have a great day.